This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so we're here to check out an air conditioner. It ain't working right. I was up on this roof just recently, and uh, filters were dirty, things like that. So let's get up here. Uh, I did notice the thermostat was blank, which means usually the power's not on. So let's climb this really nice roof we got here. Uh, yeah, roof, roof, great design. Uh, so anyhow, let's get up here and take a look, see what we got. Filters still look bad because I'm waiting to get some of the other parts. But that ain't the problem, I don't believe. It appears we don't have power. Let's see if we got any friends in here. Let's see if we got power at the uh, disconnect here. It's nothing's running, fans not running, nothing, stats dead. So it's pretty obvious that the power's dead. That's why I went ahead and killed it. This has no codes or anything like that to make it brain dead. So let's go ahead and see what we got inside here. So we come across the top here and we are dead. Nothing at all. Go to ground right here. Nothing. Now let's isolate and let's see if we're shorted to ground. Something bad might have happened. Let's see what we got there on that. Let's see if we can get a good ground. No buzzy buzzy. Nothing there. And nothing there. So did somebody shut it off by accident because things aren't labeled well? What's going on? So let's go downstairs, see if we can find the breaker for this and see what's going on. Uh, before we get started, I might as well check the belt real quick because, like I said, the belts and filters are supposed to be done by the facility here, but they haven't been getting done and they've had quite a few different people. So hopefully this new person will be taking care of that and we won't have this problem anymore. So let's check this belt. It's a fairly newer unit. It's a 2020, so it shouldn't have too many problems, hopefully, already. So belt doesn't look too bad. It's got a VFD. Looks like it's still hooked up on it. Got wires going to probably the ultraviolet light system that are not hooked up, so that's that's nice. Needed to take that a little further. What happens is since the VFD, they probably didn't know where to hook it. Well, they should have just hooked it straight to power. That had been the easiest thing. Anyhow, let's go downstairs and see what we got. Okay, we have one that's tripped here. It tripped again, so I've got the guy going up there to flip the disconnect back on. And let's see if it still trips even uh, with it disconnected. If it does, then we got wiring issues between here and the, the unit. All right, so we turned it back off up there. Let's see if it still does it. Uh-oh, didn't trip. Let's go up on the roof and see what's actually shorted. Might be shorted winding to winding. It's always something. 19 or 2020, two years old, already something shorted out. All right, so we checked the resistance each individual compressor, half a ohm, nothing to ground. So now we're going up to the motors. Everything here, nothing shorts to ground. So I'm thinking about maybe isolating this and the VFD because the VFD definitely has a tendency to go bad. So let's isolate that, flip it on, see what happens. The VFD was already bypassed. He was telling me somebody was out here for something. So it's, it's so convenient. They purposely, they almost knew that this was going to go bad in advance because the factory wired it up so you can just undo it. You know, it's not the drive. I don't think. What do we got going on here? We got some, another black wire going somewhere. That's a little odd. That looks like it ain't truly bypassed. Because here's the wires coming from there. So you got power coming down. Black. Yeah, there we go. Black's doing its thing over there. Okay, you just left one dangling here. So we'll just shove this back to the back and pretend it's not bad. I suspect, since most of this stuff only is lucky if it carries a one-year commercial warranty, that it's probably out of warranty. And it's probably, uh, in my opinion, not worth fixing because the cost of that is way more than what you'll ever save. We will just ignore that. I wouldn't think that's shot. Let's check these fuses right here and see what we've got. 
I hate flipping the breaker and having a 100 amp breaker trip. It kind of sucks. Let's try to go 1.8. One point seven, one point seven. So the fuses must be good. Fires to ground. Nothing here to the electrical section. Yeah, it's a heater number. Could have some strip heats that are shot too. That's not enough to just have one set of fuses. Let's have a bunch more of them. I know. It has. <laughs> when you opened that up, I was like, damn. As we were going through, you had nothing to ground, but. Got it there, nothing there, and nothing there. This right there goes over to the disconnect, and this comes up to here, which then goes right to this contactor here. This contactor here feeds over to that contactor, and that one there all goes down to the compressors. And I'm sure our fans yep, just chimmy jangs over to that. So it's just chain, chain link fence over over. And so one of these is a dirty hen. Problem is we got two fuses blown, but we still tripped the main. That's kind of bothersome. Let's see what happens if we turn it on. We, we ain't out much. We got it isolated there. Let's see what happens here. Close this back up. Let's see if we got some power. I ain't showing those two lights ain't on. That's what I was Well, we're at. missing one, two, two power legs. We're uh, not gonna have everything, but if we have at least something, that means we didn't trip the main. Nope. Nope. So it tripped it. So we got something really bad going on. We've isolated that. So the only thing really we got left is either the electric heater elements or the fan. And we you got this one. That breaker? Yeah. And it comes over here. So here's your condenser fan right here. So we know that that's not even pulled in. So that's not it. Now, far as the blower. All right, I'm fixing to flip it. That's fine. Okay. Yep. So we've got this going up to here, which then is fed to here, then goes over to here, and comes down to here, and goes right to it. So this is wired directly. What I would say is the deal here is that the blower is wired directly to run all the time. That's the only thing that's wired in there, honestly, that would have been energized immediately when we powered it up. Here we go. So there's all three power legs. Now you can figure that that would have tripped the smaller fuses over here. These are uh, hard to read. Hey, that didn't trip it. No, it's because I got power off. I'll see what it does now. See if we got voltage. Nothing. And nothing. Let's see if we've got it over here anymore. I lost it. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. That's all dead. So we've got the blower unconnected. We got the compressors unconnected. The only thing we got left now is the condenser fan. Let's see if it there it's at. Which it wasn't even energized, but whatever and that's probably single phase horsepower three horses rpm service factor give me the freaking voltage three phase that's three phase two okay well, at least they did that in three phase so we got one more wire here that's probably hidden some blue goes right there so there's those uh, reset her again I don't see how that could be, but it's possible. And for those that are wondering, yes, I just checked and it is 2.6 ohms between each one of those legs. So who knows? Let's let's make sure we actually are getting voltage to the top of this kind of thing. Oh, 
Well, that's because I got it isolated. Until I flip the thing on, it won't trip. That one's no good. And that one's no good. That one's half ass okay because it's 0. 0.6. And with these new probes I got, when you short them together, it's usually 0. 0.1. These things are badass. American made. Old Joe Shear got me these. These things unbelievable. Accurate. Super pointy. So not only is that got no power up there, we had no power there. Let me get over to here. The whole thing's feeding all this the 200 amp. So we've got that turned on now. Maybe we have some power. Let's see if other red juice is loose. So there's 215. 215 and 215 so everything's just wonderful here in the hood let's get this thing back together and start over upstairs again so we gotta get some more fuses all right so we got three new fuses in there don't have anything short to ground so we've got three new ones here let's go ahead and try and see what happens hopefully it don't blow let's see that motor's not spinning that's great so that probably didn't help us out a whole lot well you might be dead in the water bub that ain't good. That ain't good at all. Does that have a reset on it or anything? Well, the problem is it's not starting. Let's see if we can give it a spin here. Yeah, spin start. We still with our grinders. Yep, you guys might be DOA and, and SOL. All right, guys, this one's a new one. I It is, but it ain't. It completely missed it. Do you see anything wrong with that right there? Don't look like it, does it? Well, look what happened when you look at this other side. They melted together. I've been tracking, trying to track down a, a bad wire. Look at that. That is some amazing stuff. It is, but it ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's just freaking making you believe you've got a problem with your motor and you only got a couple seconds to get it done before it blows a damn fuse because all you got is fuses here. You got fuses up there. You got a breaker down there and then another breaker after that. Freaking just making everything more of a pain in the butt. But finally found it my god i was sitting there megging things because i'm like i can't be losing all my fuses but finally freaking narrowed it down holy crap unbelievable plain sight now from behind the scenes what i've been doing is i was just going to test out the compressors to make sure everything was okay that's when i found that the wires here were shorted together these are 60 amp fuses that's what it's rated for that's where it distributes the power from here then on down to the electric strips Got the blower hooked back up. Got the condenser fan motor hooked back up. We're gonna go ahead and hit the contactor on each one to make sure we're good, but our short was right there at the end of the fuses. Um, I'm sure it may have weakened the 80s, but I don't have any other ones and we're just gonna run it. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. That works. That's good. There goes one compressor. what our total amp draw here is. 27 amps. 28. And we got one more compressor to go yet. So the motor's not bad, which is awesome. That makes it a lot easier. Just don't like the way that is. That's kind of chintzy. All right, all, everything's running. Get the door on, get that on, running 44, 44, 46. So we are good to go. All right, that one there was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, you get hot like that and you're up on the roof, you kind of miss things. But honestly, that was a really hard one to see unless you're staring for it. A two-year-old unit you shouldn't have to worry about wires melting together in my opinion the factory didn't choose the correct gauge wire they should have never melted down like that and melted together so the insulation theoretically was not probably rated high enough and then when they tied them together they just caused the heat to bunch together that's why a lot of times THHN wire is rated for more amperage than what a Romex wire is because the wires got space in between it for air uh, same thing with uh, electrical wires up in the air they handle more power with the smaller uh, gauge wire because the air actually keeps it cool so you know just kind of goes along with that theory so pretty simple one but not simple you know it's one of those things you gotta keep your eyes open and be coherent 
Anyhow, that wraps that one up, guys. We're going to go on to the next video. Until next time, make sure you check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.